Well, good morning, friend. Friend, you know, I always love talking about how to get the kingdom and what the kingdom is. And it's a place of peace, love, and joy, right? And the, the last week, I've put out a couple of videos that were really hard. I don't like talking to people about them because when I received the information, it scared me to death. But I had to put it out because my father gave it to me, except for the difference is where I explain to you what I saw, what I know, I didn't, I saw what was coming in a vision. And, you know, I'm always talking about Jesus and getting to know Jesus and getting a red letter edition of the Bible. See how that page is almost all red? That's Jesus talking. Then in, on other pages, Let's see here. Other pages, there's a lot of black, right? I'm not saying that you don't read the Bible. But I'm telling you right now, the kingdom is in the Christ. If you're not going to get to know him and kind of let go, if you're new with Christianity and you're trying to figure out what Jesus said and meant, it's time to not listen to priests and preachers lie like serpents, wiggle half a tongue. You need to get to know Jesus really good. Because I'm going to tell you, if you will go read his parables, you will see that he said that the seed that f didn't fall in fertile soil all died. It f fell in the brambles. It fell in the shallow soil. It fell on the path the birds ate it. He gives you all kind of description. He even defines that one, right? But what I want you to understand is that seed died. If you're a dead seed, you're a dead limb. Jesus said, loving those who love you, that's easy. Even the sinners and tax collectors do that right so this hyper grace where you just receive the kingdom by grace i'm going to tell you why they tell you that they tell you that because they don't have a clue what the kingdom is because they never did the things christ asked right and studied him they study the bible and they study all this stuff and they try to they have to use that grace alone because when you're trying to receive a kingdom in your death and you turn hell into this eternal place where God's going to be a serial killer and torture you forever. Well, Jesus makes no sense. You will make no sense of him if you're trying to do that. Nor will you have any good news for anybody. They tried to scare me to death with, with hell, which was ridiculous. And that's the reason I wouldn't turn to God and why I wouldn't trust him, right? Because according to their theory... If you don't have grace alone, you're just not going to make it in because you're going to make mistakes. But that isn't what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about a conscious relationship with God right here, right now. The thing is, they don't believe that, a lot of them. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would testify to you about him. Well, if God won't talk to you, how could the Holy Spirit testify to you? So any Christian that says that you can't hear from God is a liar and a thief. So if you're listening to people that are telling you you can't know God, they're liars, and they're listening to a bunch of theologians that don't know anything, right? And Jesus told you that at the end of the age, he was going to deny those that prayed, prophesied, and cast out demons in his name. Jesus said, thank you, Father, for revealing this to babes and hiding it from the wise and the prudent, meaning the learned. So you have a lot of theologians, they know that, you know, they can spout all kind of hypocrisy and they can tell you exactly how it is that they come to grace, but they've got no grace for anyone else. They don't know love by experience. They've never had to forgive anyone. Oh, they'll, they'll judge them and they'll be like, oh, my father's going to judge him. My father's not, he's, you're going to pay your debt. I, I'm not lying. When I tell you what I saw, the only way I can describe to you the end of the age is I saw the killing fields. You're just not getting what we're going to do to one another. But this was our doing, not my father's. This was about love and peace and joy and loving thy neighbor as thyself. And I'm not afraid anymore because I do do that. I'm always trying to love my neighbor as myself. I'm telling you this because I don't want you to get caught unprepared. If you listen to these liars and these thieves, promise you a death in your a life in your death that you didn't seek in your life, you're listening to a liar. They're a serpent. They're either hyper grace or else they are terrifying you to death with this thought of Satan. 
Jesus told you you could put your foot on Satan's neck, right? But you can't do it without him. The whole purpose of creation is so that my Father can give you a free will choice and then you can choose him over the world, which is to choose Christ over Satan, which is to choose love over selfishness. If you have no interest in love, you have no interest in my Father's kingdom, and the insurance policy Jesus they offered you, they lied. They didn't listen to what he said. Jesus said, why would you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? So if you're not going to do what he said, you're never going to find this kingdom because it's something that you find by doing what he asked. And most of these self-righteous folks will never find it because they're not going to look. They just love the lies that they've told each other, right? They've deceived themselves. Jesus told you the kingdom would not be said to be here or there, but the kingdom of God would be said to be within you. If that isn't true, Christ is a liar, the whole Bible crumbles. You get that. If he's the truth and the life, if there's one thing that has to work out in that Bible, it's Jesus. So it's Jesus you ought to know, because he's the one that holds the keys to the kingdom, and he holds them in those words. But you have to believe in him, and then when you believe in him, you will believe that the Holy Spirit will testify to you about him. You will believe what he said when he said, be glad I go to the Father, because I go to the Father. The Spirit of truth will come to you, not to your lying preachers, not to some theologian, to you. And even though what he told you is true, even greater truths will you be given. If that's a lie, then the whole Bible crumbles. You get that. So the key to the kingdom is Christ and getting to know his parables. He told you, I'm going to speak in parables so you don't understand unless you turn and be forgiven, right? Why didn't he want you forgiven? Why won't anybody ask these questions? In other Bibles, it's translated a little different. It's the, you, you know, you're ever hearing and not hear, and you're forever seeing and not perceiving. Well, that's because you're busy choosing the world over Christ, and you won't do what Christ asked, and therefore you can't understand his parables because they make no sense. <laughs> I did this out of desperation, friend. I didn't, I, I didn't believe in the church. I didn't believe in Christianity. I didn't really even believe in Jesus. But it was clear to me that Jesus did die for me. He knew that he was going to die, and he said he was going to, and then did it. He died for me, friend, and he died for you. If you believe that alone, if you think there's enough proof of that, well, then you should really be trying to figure out those parables that Jesus gave because they are just the greatest thing ever. But you have to, you can't decipher these parables unless you're doing what Christ asked. A new kingdom emerges as you're doing it. So religion will lie to you and say all these things, but they haven't done what Christ asked. You want to know what the kingdom's like. Go ask the people that are loving their neighbor as themselves, and they seem to be in joy all the time, even when things aren't going right in their life. They have hardly anything, and they're walking around smiling and loving, and then you got these other theologians. They're, they're tyrants. They're judging people. Jesus told you that it would be far better to be like the tax collector than the Pharisee standing on the steps judging people, saying, thank you, Lord, for letting me not be like those drug addicts and those homeless people and all, and all of that. Jesus told you that. So if you're judging other people for their sins and you're not actually loving them and trying to help them out of their Gehenna, their state or place of mental suffering, their hell, well then... That which you gave, you're going to receive. Because while you were pointing your finger, there was three pointing back at you. And you're going to pay the debt. And because you did it in my Father's name, it is like Jesus said. Jesus told you the Pharisees would owe a greater debt. So if you're a person that's pointing your finger while three are pointing back at you, you have a greater debt because you would not not only enter the kingdom, but you wouldn't let them enter either. So I'm never here judging the sinners for what they're doing because I used to be one of those sinners out there causing suffering because I was in suffering. Hurt people hurt people. If you want to be Christ-like, you help hurt people, not hurt. You love them. You give them what they need. You teach them forgiveness. 
That is what Christ said. So all you self-righteous hypocrites out there that are standing on the step and pointing your fingers, and I know because I'm saying this to people in the church, you're saying I'm pointing a finger, but I'm not, because this is why. I'm not judging you. I'm talking to a camera. I am my father's wilderness goat, right? The spirit of Judas returned. I've given you that quite often, that Jesus came to do multiple things. You guys are upset that the Jews won't turn and, and can't figure out why, and that's because you didn't tell them that they have Yom Kippur because my father hid it from you because he didn't want you to know it until the end of the age. And I people come on here and call me a liar. They're hypocrites and thieves. They, they can't look at anything different than what they have because they see the world is in such a bad shape that they can't expand their mind. They have to live in this little box where they where they say the kingdom is in your death and grace. That's they need grace because they will not turn. They will not do what Christ asked. They must lust after their neighbor. They must drink and do things to hurt their neighbor. They must go gamble. They must do all these things. They must judge other people. They're looking at the speck in your eye so they don't have to look in the plank in their own. Friend, I don't have a plank in just one eye. I have a plank in both eyes. I'm not this righteous dude at all. I'm not here to judge anyone for anything. But I have to tell you the truth. I have to speak with a whole tongue. There is a sword in my mouth. One half is love. The other half is truth. The truth is, the church is full of hypocrisy, and they have fallen to their traditions. The same thing Jesus condemned the Pharisees for. Are you getting that? It was never about traditions. It's about love. It's about abiding in the law so that others can rise in the spirit of the law, which is the spirit of love. But if you're not going to rise in the spirit of love, if you want to be self-righteous and worship Satan, which is selfishness, you're going to be cast from the kingdom. But first, you're going to pay your debt. The end of the age, you will pay all that's due. This is what Jesus said. He told you he was going to line up the sheep and the goats, right? But then people say, oh, well, Jesus couldn't have been the altar goat because you're referring to goats. But you understand that I'm not, you guys try to make no sense of anything. If you go look, if Jesus did not blame all the dead on Judas, then he would have had to judge the Jewish people and wipe them out personally when he actually came to save them. Jesus was putting his blood above their door. Not your door, but he was doing your door at the same time, right? He opened it up to everybody. But you guys are not getting the truth. The truth is far greater than what the world knows. So, basically, if you go look, Barabbas was in jail for killing in an uprising, right? The vine of Rome was going to cut off the dead branch called Israel, gather it up and toss it into the furnace. If, he did, if they'd have done that, my father's promise to Abraham would have been broken and then the bloodline would have been lost. My father needed to keep the bloodline and the laws in place so that this could go on. And then Christians got it. You have the truth in this book, but you misinterpret it, and he left it so that you could. You know that you can misinterpret it. Just like, you know, you've got, you've got Christians gathering guns to go murder people, right? You get that. You get the end of the age here. America is dividing against itself. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Christ told you that, right? Words of Christ. So, am I here to divide your house if you're, in, if you're a churchgoer? I absolutely am. But you know why? Because you guys are so full of hypocrisy and, and won't even, you don't study Christ. You listen, to, you guys are arguing over nothing and the whole world is laughing at you. You don't find any love in any of it. You're busy judging people and if you're going to do that, you're going to pay your debt. So you need to divide and reunite. You need to be the words in red. You need to reform under, let's stop judging and let's start loving. Now, Jesus told you that, you know, if somebody was not going to abide in what he said, that 
they were supposed to be removed from the community. Not, not community like is in what you guys think is going on. It was not about one guy standing up there telling you everything and he go get lied to by a bunch of men because he go get degrees from men that got degrees from men. Get to know Christ. If he's the truth, then so be it. You're going to have to spend some time in your secret place. But if you don't get to know Christ and you go into your secret place and you believe into this hypocrisy that the church is talking, you will go into the wilderness to come out like Christ and you will come out like Satan. Because Satan will deceive you. you will, he will come to you as an angel of light, and in the end he'll tell you to murder people to save yourself. He'll tell you it's okay that God hates your neighbor. That's a lie. Christ told you that. He died for everybody, friend. Everybody. Are you worth it? I'm not. I was hurting people. He died for me so that I'd know love by experience, so I would check him out, so that I would define his parables. If you've, if you've received his death and not his life, you've got half the kingdom, friend, which is not enough to open the door. My father's not letting you in if you're not going to make a new choice. So if you're not going to get to know Jesus, he told you all this stuff. He said, don't store up your treasure here where malls and rust destroy. You know, store it up in the kingdom. And, and you do that by giving it to your neighbor. My father's in your neighbor and your neighbor's in my father. And what you do to your neighbor, you do to my father. And if you're going to do that, my father's going to make you pay a debt for it at the end of the age. And those of you that did it in his name will pay a higher debt to, than those that didn't. Christ told you that. It's all there. It's not hidden, even though it is. The problem is you won't make sense of it because you believe in them, not him. You don't have to believe me, friend. I don't want you to believe me. I don't want you to put me on a pedestal. It's funny, my, my, church, my, my uh, channel really doesn't get popular, I, I'll tell you why, because I tell you not to listen to me, right? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Here I am trying to talk to people and telling you not to listen to me. I want you to listen to me, but I want you to listen to me tell you to go read Christ and then start defining his parables, and if you get from the Father what it is he's given to me, then great, listen to me. But if not, then don't listen to me, right? But take your time to get to know Jesus inside out, upside down, and backwards because that's what's important because the church is not telling you the truth. They are not going to give you the kingdom. The kingdom comes from Christ, a direct relationship with my Father. Christ, at his, at his baptism, the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, came down upon him and remained and every word after that had a purpose. My father's not an idiot. You all are arguing over so much that if you just get to reading Jesus, you know, I, my favorite Bible, right now I'm using a traditional King, King James because my old one is where I left the ark. Uh, my father's been doing all kind of stuff with me. So anyway, uh, my favorite Bible that I had to read is a new King James because I'm not a smart, I'm not the learned. I'm not the wise and learned. I'm a man that my father sent through hell and then put me in mental health and started teaching me psychology and then took me back into the wilderness and started showing me Jesus' parables. And it turns out psychology and Jesus are one. Jesus was telling you how to have the kingdom right here, right now. I was not... Ex finding joy in my life because I was judging others and because I was holding them accountable, I knew I was guilty also. And if I read Jesus, I knew that because Jesus said, if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. So your grace is a lie because Jesus said so, right? But it's not easy to forgive other people when you're, when you're seeking the world because then you're trying to possess things and you're likely to have somebody steal it. Friend, I've had people steal from me. They broke in my house. They took money outright from me by stealing it off a job. I've had all kind of stuff. I forgive them all for they know not what they do. Just like my father forgives me for what I know not what I did. I was hurting people because I was a hurt person hurting people. I'm not here to proclaim righteousness. I'm telling you I am the prodigal son. I was stuck in hell. My father loosed my chains and set me free. He who the son sets free is free indeed. But it isn't your preacher that sets you free. It isn't their lies about what Jesus said 
that sets you free. It's understanding Christ and believing in, in your whole heart and mind that He is your Savior. And you cannot believe that if you're not going to let God come into your mind. And you can't do that if you're hiding your thoughts from Him. I still get bad thoughts. I do tell you that a lot because I want you to understand that your thoughts can get terrible. So your goal is to put them before God, right? So I'm always, and I, I do have the, the voice called the Holy Spirit, and I don't care if you believe it, and I'm not saying that you can get it in an instant. I'm telling you that my Father will give you. But to him that much is given, much is required, and him that gives nothing, even what he has will be taken away. I have an accountability for... For what I have, I have to give it. If I do not give it, I will pay my debt. However, I might even pay in some debt anyway. But it's not debt. I'm just willing to do what Christ did. Not because I'm not terrified of the thought of... Because my thought of Satan is always trying to scare me, right? It'll come and be like, you know, they're going to crucify you, Jason. They're going to lock you up. They're going to put you in a psych hospital, prison, all this stuff. And I always run to my dad. Daddy, look. See the saw of Satan? He's coming after me again. And he's like, well, thanks for coming to me, Jay. Let's have a conversation. What did Jesus say? He told me to love my neighbor as myself. That's it. You're going to have eternal life, right, Jason? Yes, Lord. Well, nobody gets out of here alive, do they? No, Lord. Look at death. You know, you've got cancer. You've got car accidents, war, murder. Friend, you got all these terrible ways of dying, and those of you that are fear, afraid of death, well, we're going to let you let the dead bury the dead. That's what Christ said. If you're fearing your death, it's because you don't, you're not convinced you have eternal life. Right? I have eternal life. You can kill my flesh, but you cannot kill my spirit. My spirit belongs to my Father, period. I don't have to worry about that. If they come kill me, it does not matter. I have eternal life. That's what Jesus said. But I also don't believe in eternal hell where, you, where God's a serial killer and he tortures you in hell forever. That's ridiculous. Never made a lick of sense. And he was talking about Gehenna. They replaced the word Gehenna with the word hell, which is actually Hades, which was a Greek pagan religion, not, Christian, not Judaism. He was talking to Jews, friend. You get that. I hope so. Do you think that they would have listened to him if he started talking Hades? He said that Hades would not prevail against the church because it's a Greek pagan religion. He was standing at Caesarea Philippi when he said that to Peter about him being the rock and the church and, and paganism would not prevail against the church. Well, it did for a period. Look at the Pope. He changed everything. Look at all your traditions. Did you know your Yule log celebration of Christmas they used to sacrifice people on in the Norse religion. Santa Claus, this deity that you lie to your children about, is supposed to be a god that knows your, when you've been naughty or nice. Only God knows that, right? Only God knows your thoughts and everything you've ever done, and you will pay for the debt that if you will not repent. Santa Claus has nothing to do with it. Lies right? You teach your children false, you teach your children paganism, and then you want them to turn to Christ. My father hasn't cast them into the darkness. We have. Either a rabbit that lays eggs is Greek fertility god, paganism. The Statue of Liberty, Ishtar. Are you getting some of the stuff? Go listen to Jonathan Kahn. If you won't listen to me, listen to somebody. And I'm not telling you Jonathan Kahn has it all perfect either, right? I'm not saying I have it perfect. I don't want you to believe me. I want you to believe Christ. You don't need to believe me, Jonathan Kahn, none of them. Believe Christ. He will bring you a greater kingdom. But the price will be high and the path will be narrow, which means your selfishness. You're going to have to die to selfishness. If you worship selfishness, you worship Satan. That's what's wrong with this world, and everybody knows it. You won't admit it. Nobody will. But it's our own selfishness that's killing us. Instead of loving our neighbor as ourselves and doing what Christ asked us to do, we're like, oh, grace alone. No, friend, you're getting cast into hell to pay your debt. You would not enter the kingdom, and you would not let your neighbor enter either. There is a debt for that. Christ told you the truth. 
Christ is the truth, not the church. And you can go read what he said. And they'll tell you, oh, he was talking to somebody else. Liars and thieves. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. He told you, what you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. Where are you going to go, friend? If this is what heaven looks like, you got nowhere to escape to. Are you getting it? No wonder my father has to pass judgment. This is what we're doing to his house. But I've explained far more, and I'm not going to do it today in this one. But I'm just telling you that hell isn't there. It's coming here, and if you don't make a new choice, you're going to get what you gave. Then you will be cast out like cancer from the body of Christ. There is no lie in that. My father is not going to torture cancer forever. He did make a law. He did tell you you have to pay your debt at the end of the age. Christ told you those that wouldn't enter the kingdom and wouldn't let others enter either and did it in his name were going to pay a higher debt than those that didn't. So the atheists paying a debt, yes. Christians paying a higher debt, yes. If you're not going to turn, if you're not going to do what Christ asked, if you're not going to love your neighbor as yourself, if you're going to choose Satan over Christ, selfishness over love, the world over God. This is what Jesus was talking about, but it's all hidden in parables secretly. You literally have to go do the things he asked for it all to come together. Then he'll do with you what he did with me, and he'll give you a higher truth. And then you'll love the world even though you hate it for what we're doing to one another. You all worried about hell. What about the people in Ukraine? The kids over there are getting ripped apart by bombs. Do you understand that? And you're worried about hell here? What, what you give you don't think you're going to get? Are you kidding me? So I'm telling you, choose love over selfishness. That's the key. Bring the kingdom. Then if it all goes wrong, you'll, you'll feel good about yourself. That's what you want to do. But you can't do that without loving the Father and your neighbor. And you can't do it on your own. I can't clean my own thoughts. They're filthy. All the time they, they show up. And I go, look, Lord, here comes another thought. And he's like, well, thanks for coming to me, Jay. Let's talk about it. What happens if you follow that thought, Jay? What happens if you go do that that you're thinking about wanting to do right now? I'm like, well, I'm going to cause other people suffering, and then I'm going to feel guilty and hide my thoughts from you, and then I'm, my suffering in hell is going to begin all over again. And he's like, doesn't sound like a good plan, does it, Jay? I'm like, no, it doesn't, Lord. Thank you. And then he's like, you know, I love you. I know he loves me. I don't care if you say I got a voice that tells me I love me and I'm an, I'm an imagination. If for the first time in my life, friend, because I love my father and my neighbor, I can love myself. That doesn't mean, but the problem is if I put me ahead of you and him, well, then I'm not going to feel good. I'm going to hide my thoughts from God and I'm going to end up back in hell. And my thought of Satan is going to have power over me because I can't talk to God. He's just going to talk me to death right? So I'm telling you, if you fell off the wagon, get back on. If you've messed it all up, you're a prodigal son like me. If you left your house, sit empty, and the demons returned and brought friends, go home. Return to Christ. Be like, Lord, forgive me for I know not what I do, and he'll meet you running across the field with open arms. You're thinking you're going to go back as, as, you know, as just a servant, and you're going to be received as a son. But to be received as a son is to accept that everyone else is a son too. So you can't be judging other people and pointing a finger without three pointing back at you. That's the absolute truth. There's grace for everyone that will turn. But that means you're going to have to start spending time in your secret place seeking the kingdom by getting to know Christ and doing what he asked. If you're not willing to do that, you're not going to enter the kingdom. The debt you owe, the debt you pay. Christ told you all this. It's all in his parables. So please... Go listen to what the man said. Just know I love you because my father loves you, and may God bless you and yours.